Jeff, thank you. To everyone here, President Trombley, Dan Onofrio, Wayne Morris, and Jeff, again, thank you for your kind introduction. Members of the Bridgeport Chamber, the Bridgeport Regional Business Council, elected officials, honored guests, and members of my family that are here, my, my mom and dad are here. I want to give them a shout out over there. Brothers and sisters, by the way, two of my children are here. By the way, Madam President, my daughter's a student at the PA school here. Very proud of that. She loves it. So thank you for your leadership. Um, and as a graduate of the University of Bridgeport School of Law, returning as kind of a rookie professor adjunct, it's an honor and a pleasure as your mayor to deliver my 16th annual State of the City address on this campus as the mayor for the first mayor to ever do this. This gathering of business members, elected officials, community leaders is in many ways emblematic of a renewed relationship between the city and the University of Bridgeport. A relationship in which we recognize the value that our academic institutions bring to our city, the young people that they attract, and the doors of opportunity that they open for so many. Now, I have a major concession to make. Bob Bertram, who you recognize, you finally did something right, I can say, <laughs> when he and the board selected President Trump to lead this university at this critical time. Madam President, thank you for being such a gracious host to me and to all of us today. Let's give her another round of applause. <laughs> and friends, members of the business community, Bridgeport is a city that's growing and on the move while retaining a legacy of industry and manufacturing which characterizes our city's past. Today, Bridgeport's evolving into a modern city, a city that's a center for culture, dining, and entertainment, a smart city that values green space and sustainability with assets such as the Eco Technology Park, the largest fuel cell in the Western Hemisphere, solar panels, a micro grid, and a proposed thermal loop in the downtown. It's a city that boasts a vital, professional, and growing downtown population, and ultimately, a city that's a destination for families that live and work in the region. Adding to the, Har the arena at Harbor Yard, the Barnum Museum, the Klein Memorial, the Bijou, as well as the Beardsley Zoo. Whoop, whoop, oops, <laughs> make it in there. Today, I'd like to take this opportunity to give a more depth and more depth to the idea that Bridgeport's a city that's growing and on the move. Mm -hmm. And provide real and tangible evidence of progress, including well over, as was mentioned, a billion dollars of new economic development projects that are happening all across our city. Let's start with a look at the downtown. Over these past two decades, we've seen a steady increase of housing stock, with a trend that's expected to continue. In addition to the success of the security building, with 70 new apartments, McQuig Square, an $18 million renovation that includes 32 apartments, and the Harlem House, and the Stress Factory Comedy Club. There are several other projects underway that are also transformed in the downtown area of our city. In downtown North, quick progress is being made at the Jason Newfield buildings. This summer, 50 units of mixed rate housing will be available, quickly followed by 50 more units by the end of the year. This $25 million project will also feature retail, including a new group hub. At Congress Plaza, the City Council just approved a private investment of $18 million, 92 market rate units with retail in downtown North. Also proposed in this area is a $15 million private investment in ice rinks. This new development to provide opportunities for professional skaters and young people alike to enjoy time on the ice in downtown Bridgeport. And these two projects are directly across from the historic Poli and Majestic Theaters, where renovation of the theaters along with a 100 room hotel has been proposed. And today I'm happy and able to report that the developer, Exact Capital, has made substantial progress and remains on track to secure financing for the first $50 million phase one of this overall 
$400 million project. The other phases of this project include two 18-story residential towers. We'll actually add to the city skyline as they become the tallest building in Bridgeport. I don't know if Fred Livingston was able to make it, but if he's here, if he's not, I'd like to give him a round of applause for his commitment. Thank you, Fred. Thank you for being here. So throughout downtown North, we're talking about the restoration of historic buildings, hundreds of millions of dollars in private investment as well as housing and retail and green space. And this is exactly what our downtown needs to thrive and to be successful. This is all in addition to one of the most exciting developments happening, I say, anywhere in Connecticut. Our new outdoor amphitheater. Through a public and private partnership investing over $20 million, the ball field at Harbor Yard is being transformed into a venue that will host concerts by Live Nation and many other events throughout the year. Starting this summer, the dramatic tinsel roof takes shape above the, takes shape above the structure. And this will soon be a new icon for Bridgeport and its work. By this time next year, this venue will be fully operational, attracting tens of thousands of visitors to our city, supporting the downtown restaurants and businesses, and helping make Bridgeport even more of a center for music, entertainment, arts, and culture. You can tell we're excited about this project coming to fruition. And I know Howard's here, I don't know if Jim's here, but the Howard Stefan, Jim Coppock, I hope will stand. Let's give them a round of applause. So Now, along with all this development going on in downtown, there's also a significant number of projects happening all over the city. Promise to create a better future for our neighborhoods. One of these is the Congress Street Bridge. As many of you know, that bridge was closed over two decades ago, and in effect disconnected the east side from the downtown, and making it hard for residents and first responders alike to get from one side the city to the other. But as a result of a partnership of federal, state, and local government, the $25 million needed for this project is finally in place. And I hope to be walking across that bridge next year, or better yet, maybe pull another barnum -S stunt as we did with the Stratford Avenue Bridge back in 1998, and ride an elephant across. <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe not. If you've driven by Steel Point recently, you'll have seen the 50,000 square foot Doc Masters building adorning our work. This will become home to the new Mediterranean Oyster Bar and Restaurant opening in a couple months, among other things. Also opening are half of the 250 boat slips at the marina, making this the closest deep water marina of its kind in New York City accommodating yachts as large as several hundred feet long. Soon, people from all over will be docking their boats in Bridgeport Harbor, enjoying a nice meal at the Oyster Bar, traversing the boardwalk along the waterfront. And I've got to say, this is the kind of new look and feel that we want to bring to our city. They've been here a long time. I knew the father better than the son, but let's give the Christophs a round of applause. It's a young talk right here. Year, we expect the construction to begin on approximately 200 residential units with 20,000, actually 25,000 square feet of retail space. And the harbor wall will continue to be extended. And not to be forgotten is the proposed development of a new resort casino on Bridgeport's waterfront. Such a development can, and I believe will, bring thousands of jobs for Bridgeport residents and tens of millions of dollars of revenue to our city and state. I know Steve staff rooms here, I don't know if other members of the delegation are, but now is the time in this legislation, this legislative session to make our voices heard and 
push to make this development a reality. Let's give Steve and the rest of the delegation a round of applause. Now, as we look at the progress on the east side, we're also making great strides to clean up and bring development to what's called the East End. And one of the most long-awaited projects of all is finally taking shape in our city. It's called the Civic Block, and many of you know it's on Stratford Avenue. And this July, we expect that we'll cut a ribbon on a $7 million renovation and expansion of the Newfield Library on that site. We'll also soon be breaking ground on another $7 million private investment in retail that includes a much needed grocery store to serve that area. Two of the businesses or developments, I should say, that are committed to this are Anthony Stewart as a developer and Alex Payne with Gallup Foods are both committed to investing in that. I hope they're here and I'd like to acknowledge them as well. Give them a round of applause. Alex and Anthony. Thank you. So as we talk about continuing to transition underutilized parcels from old to new, there are other great projects going on all across the city. The former Boys and Girls Club in the North End has finally been demolished to make way for a new $12 million weight with Boys and Girls Club at that location. In the West End, Corvus Capital has started to reshape our views of the city along the I-95 corridor, transforming blight and graffiti to what departments, a school and retail, is part of the $250 million West End master by the end of the next month, over 150 units will have already been leased, and construction will continue on many more. I don't know if I saw Gary or, or, or Jeff, but they're very visible in our community what they're doing. Gary Clark and Jeff Rubenstein, I'd like to shout them out and give a round of applause. <laughs> so, here in the South End, you may have noticed the majority of the Marina Village housing project is being demolished, making way for a $65 million investment in 60 new apartments, as well as a community health care center. Park City communities and town and budget the apartments on this. And I know there's members of the Park City Community Board here. I know Stephen Nelson here, and Collins is here, and I'm from Fletcher, you're here. But it's a day to give appreciation. Shout out. Thank you guys for what you do. Now, about a week ago, I joined several mayors from around the country in what's called the Mayor's Institute for City Design. And what we do is we work with experts on design ideas, and for Bridgeport, we did that with a new gateway to the South End. This gateway, as I like to refer to it, would involve beautification and public infrastructure improvements with the repurposing of several parcels along this beautiful Park Avenue corridor. Through a partnership with the city and the university and community leaders, this, this investment will allow residents and visitors alike to better appreciate beautiful assets such as this University of Bridgeport and Seaside Park that our city has to offer. So I look forward to that and working with others on that. But I want to also say, as you know, recently, we lost our state representative in the South End. Ezekiel Santiago has dedicated years of service to his neighborhood and the entire city and state. So maybe perhaps this gateway, as it comes to fruition, should be named in Ezekiel as ours. So as we're in the South End, of course I'd be remiss if I didn't highlight PSEG and their $550 million investment, which is now being completed of a 485 megawatt natural gas power plant. This is a called state-of-the-art facility represents one of the largest private investments in Bridgeport's history and is part of substantial tax base growth. This construction is soon to be followed by what's called the decommissioning of the last coal burning plant in Connecticut, and now it's on Bridgeport Waterfront. This project, as it comes to fruition, helps the environment with the transition from coal, burning coal to natural gas. It creates jobs for Bridgeport residents. And that site 
will likely be the prime waterfront redevelopment site as we continue to plan for Bridgeport's future. As always, a shout out to PSG for their huge commitment in the city of Bridgeport. Thank you. For so as all these projects are happening in our city, representing real and tangible change from blighted properties and empty lots towards a service-oriented city with modern amenities, dining, entertainment, and housing. I must say that along with these many positive developments, there's challenges. Overcoming these challenges requires the unwavering attention of steady, experienced leadership. These challenges include budget constraints and high property taxes, the efficient and effective operation of city government, public education and public safety, these challenges have no simple fix. However, I'd like to say they're all a real stress test on this administration and our ability to bring positive, fundamental change to the residents of the city and those that have businesses here. When I took office in 2015, we inherited a budget that was out of balance by some $20 million. And additionally, we continue to face structural and reoccurring fiscal problems with unfunded pension liabilities tax system that's fundamentally flawed with its own reliance on property taxes to fund local government and public education. And in each budget cycle, we're faced with these as well as the reliance on state aid to meet increased fixed costs and the grand list where one third of the property is tax exempt despite the fact that we shoulder the burden of providing a multitude of services for the entire region. And yet each year, all of us work together local elected officials, state elected officials, businesses and government. And in City Hall, we were diligently to cut spending, to refinance and restructure city debt, to find savings throughout the budget, including wages and health care costs. Because of what at times requires bold and decisive efforts, with the help of the City Council, we balanced each year's budget with a commitment to holding down property taxes. By the way, I know there's members of the city council here. I think they're right back there. Let's give them a round of applause and a shout out. For their hard work. And I'll say thanks to these efforts, as well as the growth in the grand list. Last night, I delivered my budget to the city council, which will cut taxes for the first time in 12 years. Budgets that I've presented as mayor, 14 of them have either held the line or even slightly reduced property taxes. So is Bridgeport's second longest serving mayor after Jasper McLeavy, and some say at times the most entertaining after P.T. Barnum. <laughs> I can attest that this tax record, as Jeff mentioned, is unmatched by any mayor of Bridgeport in the last 50 years. And going forward, my commitment to sound budgets remain. Now, while maintaining a balanced budget and holding taxes down is a priority of this administration, it's not at the expense of investing in places of learning for our children. Just recently, we cut a ribbon on a new $107 million Hardy High School. This is in addition to an $80 million renovation of Central High School. And we remain committed to making these large but necessary investments in our school as we look to construct a new Bassett High School in coming years. Let me also take a moment to note how here at the University of Bridgeport, of course, but also Utatana Community College in downtown Bridgeport, with its recent $45 million expansion, continues to also invest in higher education opportunities. And I want to say about Utatana, I think we're grateful that they partnered with the city to provide educational and job training opportunities to ensure second chance residents. This benefits all of us. So to them, to all of our centers for higher learning and all that are committed to education, I want to say thank you. <laughs> Finally, as we prioritize economic development projects while keeping our budget in check, public safety, remains a top priority for this administration. When it came into office, I pledged that we would hire 100 police officers. And with the support of the city council, we exceeded that goal. And we're now hiring another 30 later this month. Likewise, we've hired fire recruits 
We are currently engaged in an aggressive marketing campaign to recruit diverse and well-qualified groups of men and women to join the sports brains. And I can assure you that this administration will continue to invest each year in police and fire recruits to ensure that public safety remains our top priority. Speaking of major investments over the past year, our emergency department, specifically the police department, has made a giant leap into the 21st century with the launch of several new tech job technologies, including NextGen to improve emergency response times, nationally recognized shot spotter for instantaneous response to shootings, and the addition of body and dash cams for greater on-scene safety and security, as well as police accountability. Let's take an opportunity to thank all of our uniformed services. If you're here, I saw one of the chiefs here, maybe both of them here, for all that they do to keep us safe. Let me say, because of the efforts of so many, the state of our city is strong, and the fundamental changes that we're making today are paving the way for a brighter tomorrow. Thank you for your continued support and faith in our city. Thank you for the opportunity, the pleasure now to continue to serve as your mayor. Thank you, and God bless.